uh, regarding uh, parents and, and so on and so forth. Um, this, this bill for decriminalization is in your power to basically quantify and to delegate the resources for what New Hampshire can, uh, can uh, in initialize uh, penalties. Um, according to the Attorney General's reports, the 2011 biannual uh, Department of Justice report, proceeds go, 45% of the seizing agencies, 45% goes to drug forfeitures, and 10% drug to drug treatments. These, these bills or canvas legislation currently that criminalize this activity is a huge money-making opportunity, not just for the states, but also for the federal government, and also for the, for the police departments in, in, in tow. Uh, last year, according to the Drug Task Force uh, reports, uh, there were 2,116 criminal cases, an 18% increase from the last report, which is, again, comes out every two years, in which there were 321 arrests. They confiscated $217,656, three automobiles, one house, 94 weapons. Confiscated off the, off the streets was 129 pounds of cannabis, 12 and a half pounds of cocaine, six ounces of crack cocaine, five and one quarter ounces of heroin, 4,700 Oxycontin pills, 4,341 prescription depressants, 1,519 ecstasy pills, 36 methadone pills, and seven and a half grams of crystal meth. We're using far more resources for marijuana, marijuana cases, than in anything else. There is a huge, huge, disproportionate problem with pharmaceutical drugs. Now, of course, that might be a completely different bill, but when we're talking about youth usage, just like, and I, and I applaud the efforts of the, of the students for coming in here and stating what they choose. And they have that right to choose. There's no one taking that away from them. The state has no right to take that away from them either. But unfortunately, there is a huge, huge <coughs> misuse or mischaracterization of cannabis versus other drugs, whether or not they be legal or illegal. Prescription drugs are a huge, huge problem. There are far more, far more misuse of those. I understand that, man. And with all, and with all due respect, we're talking about illegal drugs in total. No, no, the white use cannabis. Oh, oh, cannabis. Cannabis is marijuana. Okay. Back in 1937, uh, the American Medical Association, as well as numerous or a lot of doctors, actually, all knew marijuana as cannabis. Marijuana is actually a, uh, a, a word given to this particular plant that is incredibly racist. It was... Okay, sir, I think you've explained, you know what cannabis is marijuana. No, she did. No, so, I didn't you get I, I'm the, looking at a bill that says marijuana. Sure. The discrim this discrimination is, is completely rampant. The NAACP, as well as Latino groups, all uh, have signed resolutions to sir, basically... Sir, please stick with Marjorie Bill. Just, just address marijuana. All right. And what this, uh, this bill will do if enacted? Sure. What this bill will do if enacted will basically help safeguard our communities, mm -hmm. Let's just protect our most vulnerable veterans, parents, and kids. All right. That is what you have to look at. All right. And I apologize for getting a little bit out of topic, but this is a multifaceted, dual complex issue. This is not just a fine line of cannabis versus other drugs. This is a huge, huge money-making opportunity for the government. The state of New Hampshire receives $29 million annually from the federal government for programs such as drug prevention, drug interdiction, as well as other proceeds for, uh, for rehabilitation. The amount of money that this state is using to facilitate this egregious attempt against marijuana needs to be stopped and needs to be redressed. Thank you. Go ahead. Are you addressing the bill or are you addressing the amendment? I just saw the amendment today. Uh, personally, myself, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the, of the amendment. I, I, the decrim bill was set at $100, and I represent Tesco. I, I, I applaud the amendment to get it through the process. However, the decriminalization, I liked it at the $100 mark. The $250 is an is a artificial fee based upon what the legislature would be willing to make it pass through the legislature. 
I'm not, I'm not a huge supporter of, of artificial uh, manipulation. Absolutely. My question would be to you. You would, you would stay with the hundred dollars and make sure that the bill probably wouldn't go through. Or would you? Well, would you compromise? Oh yeah, I would compromise. Um, and, and I'm not, I'm not saying that the amendment is not worthy. I'm just saying what personally my choice is and what I personally would like to see is the other. However, to get it through the committee and get it through to the House floor and get to the Senate, I would say compromise is appropriate. Thank you. All right? That's what I would say. I have a comment. Would you believe that internal possession of alcohol for someone under 20 years of age, you know, you can't .02, I believe it is, that it's a $300 penalty plus plus. $300 fine plus a penalty assessment of $60. It comes up to $360. But this doesn't affect you for internal possession, so this would be less. My question to you, sir, is what no, you said. No, no, no question to me. Okay, so just make a comment if you wish. I don't know what that has to do with this bill. I'm just, we're, we're talking money here, right? Talking penalty. You're talking penalty? Yeah, go ahead. For internal possession of alcohol, it would be higher than this penalty. So what would be wrong with this? monetary penalty. Again, I am, personally myself, I am not for artificial uh, infringement upon a person's right to choose. That's just, that's my personal opinion. Now, if if you were to ask me, you know, am I in favor of, if you're asking me am I in favor of fining and, and, and penalizing people, the answer to the question is no. But if you're saying as a compromising aspect to a piece of legislation, I would have to say, in every piece of legislation, every bill, there needs to be baby steps to get things done. And this is an appropriate first measure, yes. Will it be readdressed later if it does happen to become law? Yes. Will I make sure I do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure, to the best of your knowledge, how many people have died on overdoses of marijuana? Zero. There are more people that die annually from peanuts than they do on the cannabis. And I, and I say cannabis because that's the actual legal term. How often do people get into violent confrontations after smoking marijuana? Hmm, that's a really good question. And unfortunately, I don't have the appropriate uh, response to that question. However, um, there are Attorney generals who have been on record um, videotape uh, at a last week at a uh, drug seminar in Detroit, Michigan, that the attorney general who uh, is no longer there, his name is Michael Cox, said that in his course of action of prosecuting over 20 years worth of uh, criminal activity in the city of Detroit, that it has very rarely will there be physical abuse from cannabis users on their wives or their children. So, from a political answer. I have to say that from a politician who's an attorney general who was elected and voted for eight years, that holds a lot of credibility and a lot of, a lot, you know, a lot of, a lot of promise. Thank you. No further questions? Thank you.